Well, what's this thing look like? Uh, sooner or later, uh, we get. Oh, uh, here's A1, B1, and here's A2, B2, and here's A3, maybe B3 is here, right? And and they moved out like that. <coughs> First observation, A, K, is less than B, J, for all pairs K, J. So, no, what's this saying in words? No left endpoint is ever greater than or equal to any right end. But why would that be true? Well, what if it weren't true? What would be happening? You'd have some BJ here, right? And the AJ, in order for it to be a proper interval, it can't be the same, right? And then and then if if uh, this were the AK, right, BK would be up here. They don't look nested to me. Not right? The only way for them to be nested with all four of these values would be the same, but then you wouldn't have an interval. So you don't have the you know, proper interval sitting inside another proper interval. So it's always true that every left endpoint is smaller than a right endpoint for any of them, right? Any left endpoint is smaller than any right endpoint for any of these intervals. Right? Correct? Right. Okay. So can we say that the, the uh, can we say that the suprema of the left endpoints is then less than or equal to uh, If the ANs are always strictly less than every BK, then if we take the supremum of the ANs, it's at most equal to or less than every BK, right? So the supremum of the left endpoints is never any greater than any of the right endpoints. And the infimum. of the right endpoints is never any smaller than any of the left endpoints. Okay. But now, uh, we always have this situation. We have uh, AK It's less than or equal to the infimum of the BNs. Uh, I won't write the above. There. And uh, let me draw a picture. Here are the A's marching up. And here's the supremum. Of the, of the ANs. And here are the Bs marching down. And, and this, this is the infimum of the BNs. The BNs are coming down and the ANs are going up. Okay. Um, the supremum of the ANs is greater than any particular A. And the infimum of the BNs is less than any particular BN. And yet the limit as n goes to infinity and the separation between these two must be zero. What does that force the difference between these two to be? It forces it to be zero as well. I mean, what else could happen? The soup of the ANs is bigger than any 
A and the input of Bns is less than MEB. And yet, you can always go find an interval out there, A and Bn, that's arbitrarily small, which pushes together the soup and the in. They have to be inside that. So they're pushed together, right? And in the limit, they're zero. Okay. This, in, in the limit, these two things are the same. My point lambda is either one of those in the limit, right? It's the one point that is the soup of all the left end points and the inf of all the right end points. Why is that point necessarily, uh, the, why does it exist? Why can't it be the most? It's in every one of those points. It's in every one. You can't have any width, but there's a point there, nevertheless. I claim that I claim that the point that's in there is in every one of the intervals, and it survives the intersection. But only one point can survive. Because if you had, imagine if you had two points, lambda and mu, right? And they're different, so there's a, a separation. That separation is something. What are you going to do when you? Go way out in your sequence and you find an interval that's even smaller than their separation. Not both of them could be in that, right? There's the limit you can. These things are separated by a certain amount. And if you get an interval that's smaller than their separation, not both of them can be in it. Right? You cannot tolerate two or more points surviving this intersection as long as the the condition is that the norm of, of the uh, intervals goes to zero as opposed to infinity. So one point gets left, and it's there, but that's all you can have. You cannot have two different points. And that's the nested interval theory. And you can generalize that to other space, metric spaces, and go through the same part. You know, you have diameters of uh, balls in space, and you know, they get smaller and smaller, you know. You can, Okay? Alright. So that's the nested interval. So let's return to the stone, or not the Bolzano wire stress theory, not the stone wire stress theory. The Bolzano wire stress theory, remember that's bounded into the set, has an accumulation point. <coughs> Alright. Here's uh, alpha, here's beta. And the set S is lying around in here. It could be a really horrible set, you know. It could be the Cantor middle third set or something. The point is we can trap it in a interval alpha beta. So it's bounded and it's in. Alright. Let me do this. Let me do this. If it's an infinite set, if I cut the interval alpha beta in half, one or the other, perhaps both, but at least one of these intervals must contain an infinite number of points of S, correct? Because if each one contained a finite number of points only of S, then S would be a finite set, and it is not. So let's take one that's infinite and call that one, uh, well, let's call alpha beta I1, and let's call this one I2. This was the right hand one. And how long is I2? The norm of I2 is uh, beta minus alpha over 2 to the 1. You know, let's make it I1. Then, then this will agree with that. It will be more elegant if we do that. <laughs> okay. Sorry, and I know these things are off you when I can scratch them. All right. I repeat the argument, since there's, since there's an infinite number of points of S in here, S is this funny, funky set here, but there's an infinite number of points of S in here. Uh, if I cut this one in half, the mid middle, one or the other of these must also have an infinite number of points. Otherwise, I1 couldn't have had uh, an infinite number, right? Let's just call out oh, what's, maybe it's this one, maybe I2 is, is this one, okay? How big is I2? Beta minus alpha to 2 squared, right? 
Do you see we can continue this process? Are these nested intervals? Yes, they are. By construction, they're nested. They're closed also by construction, right? So use the nested interval theorem. Oh, by the way, uh, what's the norm doing? The norm of the nth one is uh, the original beta minus alpha is bound. You know, that's a, just a number because it's, it was a bounded interval. 2 to the minus n. It looks like that thing's getting small. Is it headed towards zero? I think so. So all the conditions for the uh, nested interval theorem are in play. And there must be a point. Let's call it this one right here, lambda. Is the point given to us then by the nested interval theorem. 